so excited to be here, ladies and gentlemen, that you're all here for the premiere of our new musical. And I'm especially excited that I actually get to be a producer of a musical. I've always wanted to be a producer. I want to be a producer. Hovering over the honey tree. That's not right. No, I've, I've always wanted to be a producer, and I'm so excited that I get to do it tonight. It was, it was a long journey to get to this place filled with adventure and romance. Would you like to hear the story of how I got to be a producer? Yeah. About half of you would, all right. <laughs> My journey to being a producer started when I was living on the West Side. So you could say this is a West Side, West Side story. story. <laughs> I started off, as many of you know, as a performer. And I've been touring as a performer for, I don't know, the last five years. <laughs> and I got to go all over the world. I've been to Chicago, <laughs> Oklahoma, <laughs> the South Pacific, and Vietnam. Yeah. The conditions in the theaters weren't the best in Vietnam. A lot of the theaters had holes in the roofs and it was very stormy, so a lot of times we were singing in the rain. And the theaters would flood, so right down the center aisle we'd get this big river. Oh. But I will tell you, I met the best friends on that tour. Tommy, Oliver, Joseph. I called them the Jersey Boys. <laughs> Not because of why you think. They were always wearing their favorite shirt from their favorite baseball team, those damn Yankees. <laughs> Who else was there? There was Billy, Elliot. Oh. Oh, that dear Evan Hansen. Yes! And uh, what was his name? What was his name? Um, Todd Sweeney or something like that? I don't, yes. I don't remember. Anyway. Vietnam was such a wonderful experience. I just miss Saigon. <laughs> but I knew I couldn't make a living as a performer for very long. I mean, it paid well, but not well enough. There were some times when I really didn't know how I was going to pay last month's rent. <laughs> and I realized the money was in producing, so I figured I have to become a producer. So I'm going to go on this journey, and I toured everywhere, hitting every theater I could. I went up and down Sunset Boulevard. I went to New York and went up and down 42nd Street. Yeah. I went all the way out to Avenue Q. Yeah. That's where I met this girl named Annie. Uh. <laughs> and she told me that her brother, George Birdie, was a producer and that he was looking for someone to help co-produce his next musical. He said, well, you have to set up a meeting. He says he likes to hang out in Central Park on the weekends. So I spent Sunday in the park with George. <laughs> and we talked, we played chess and when we were just about to get down to business i realized it was all a big ruse they were going to rob me george turns to his sister and says annie get your gun <laughs> and i said bye bye birdie <laughs> and i went and hid behind the carousel <laughs> until i could get out of there i was going to go to the forum theater for one more meeting well a funny thing happened on the way to the forum <laughs> especially if you didn't see that one coming. <laughs> I get into a cab, and I'm about to head out that way, and just as I do, this lady jumps into the cab and tries to push me out. And the cab driver is like, no, no, you can't do that. And she's like, yes, I can, I'm your fare now. And the cabbie points at me and goes, no, that's my fair lady. <laughs> and I say, it's fine, it's fine, we can share the cab. So we do, and we get to talking. It turns out she wasn't all that wicked. She was actually a funny girl. Her name was Nanette. She came from a fun home. We started dating, and uh, she took me back to her place one time, and you know, I got to meet her cats, Matilda and Evita. And her sister Kate, who warned me that it wasn't going to last between me and Nanette. See, apparently Nanette had dated a lot of guys and dolls. And she kept a record of everyone she'd ever dated. She had, she had all the men she'd ever dated, she kept in a book. And when she filled that one up, she filled up another book. Yeah, she had one book of men and a book of more men. <laughs> uh, 
couldn't believe it. Because I turned to her sister and said, she won't even kiss me, Kate. She said, well, you never know what you're going to get with her. You know, she tends to be very fickle. She can either be very, very fussy or very bossy. Sometimes at the same time, she'd be very fussy. <laughs> and it was true. You never knew what you were going to get with Nanette. One time, she completely changed her appearance. She walked in and I went, Mamma Mia! <laughs> she was wearing these kinky boots. <laughs> she changed her hair. <laughs> she teased it all out to here, and I thought she did it with hairspray. <laughs> Turns out it was with some kind of grease. <laughs> and she colored it this really bright color. And she actually patented this color too, so not only was she now a blonde? She was legally blonde. <laughs> I said, that's it. I can't take this anymore. I don't think we can see each other anymore. And she was like, what? How can you do this to me? I'm crazy for you. I said, oh, you're crazy, all right. Maybe not completely crazy, but certainly not next to normal. I mean, there's a light in the piazza, but nobody's home. If you know what I'm saying. <laughs> So she said, don't you love me? And as much as it pained me to say it, I had to say, no, no, Nanette. And we broke up. But it's okay. Went home, continued my, my quest, and I went through my email, deleted all the junk. I get spam a lot. <laughs> and I found an email from my old friend Dolly whom I hadn't heard from in forever, I had to call her up. She saw it was my number and she answered the phone. She said, hello, Dylan! <laughs> you know what I said. <laughs> and I was like, I didn't think I'd hear from you for so long, you know, because I heard, you know, you'd gone like on some spiritual journey into the woods, in some secret, secret garden, and we're living like a gypsy. So no, but she's come back home, she's living in the heights now. And I said, wait a minute, you're in town? Yeah, I worked that one in. She says, yes, and I hear you want to be a producer. I'd like to introduce you to someone who I think can help you. Um, uh, Mr. Charles Brown will be able to help you, and he's looking for some, a co-producer. And I've heard this before. I said, yeah, okay, promises, promises. She says, no, really. I want to introduce you to him. So she introduces me to Mr. Charles Brown uh, and says, you know, I want to make sure you're serious about this. I'm not going to do any sweet charity here. I said, no, I'm very serious. He goes, are you sure? Because you don't look like the kind of person who knows the difference between a good musical and a lame musical. And I assured him. I know what good is, and I know what lame is. Oh. 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 <laughs> so he took me on to join his company. I said, you're a good man, Charlie Brown. <laughs> and we produced a musical, I'm sure you've heard of, it was written by none other than Luke Skywalker himself, Mark Hamill. It was about the life of Mark Hamill, and it starred Mark Hamill. Oh yeah, it was a ton of Mark Hamill. You could say... <laughs> Became one of the producers! Yeah.